Thank you for your interest to this session. I'm going to talk to you about the uh, business immigration to Canada. My name is Hao Kwan, and I'm the, um, as I mentioned, the direct marketing director for Ori Capital, which is a subsidiary of the Raymond Chabot Grant Thornton. And I have with me my colleague, uh, Irina Kimenko. She's from Grant Thornton Monaco, and she's going to join me later on to talk about Monaco. Okay, so um, as I mentioned, uh, Irina is from GT uh, Grand Thornton Monaco, and I'm from the uh, Grand Thornton firm in Quebec, and we're part of the Grand Thornton International Network of accounting and uh, consulting firms, and we are over 130 countries in the world, and we provide assurance, tax, and advisory services to the clients all around the world. Um, what I'm going to talk to you about, I'm going to talk to you about the Canadian Immigrant Investor Program. I'll give you a glance of Canada and then an overview of all the business immigrations. And then I'm going to focus on the Quebec, uh, Quebec province and the Quebec Immigrant Investor Program. And I'm going to finish with why uh, ORA Capital and the support and guidance we can provide you uh, in the process, immigration process. And then at the end, Irina is going to come to give you a preview of tomorrow's presentation. So Canada at the glance, you may have heard this morning about the advantages of Canada. The Canada has been ranked uh, for the best quality of life a couple of times. Recently, it has been ranked the second best city for immigrants. And regarding the education, the Canadian university have a stellar reputation. And now you have a couple of pictures of uh, of some landscape, and you have Montreal, and you have Toronto. Right now, it's beautiful in uh, in Canada because the fall leaves turn into gold, green, uh, orange, red. is is breathtaking. Now, let's talk about the Canadian business immigration. Here in Canada, we have ten provinces and three territories, and most of them have uh, business immigration. Almost all of them have uh, active investment business immigration, except for one, which is a Quebec immigrant investor. That one has a passive investment immigration, and that's the reason why I'm going to talk to you about the Quebec immigrant investor. Also because I am come from Quebec. Uh, my parents and I, we migrated to Canada when I was very young. I was, um, I've been living, I went to school, uh, so I'm like a living proof of how a great life can be in uh, Quebec, Canada. So, a glimpse of Quebec. Quebec, the area is a little bit twice the size of France. The population is a little bit more than 8 million people. The official language is French, but English, English is spoken uh, widely, especially in Montreal. Has anyone, has anyone here been to Canada? Okay, Montreal? Okay, that's good. Um, and then uh, the industry, uh, while the service sector dominates the industry, the economy, and because of the abundance of natural resources, while that favor, favor agriculture, uh, manufacturing, hydro, hydro energy, uh, mining, and, um, and transportation. So this is a picture of Montreal right now. Um, we have the province of Quebec has reached an uh, annual historical low rate of employment. Right now it's about, um, for 2016, it was 7.1. And I just checked recently for the month of September, that rate ran down to 5.4 of employment rate. Montreal has um, become, was named the best city for foreign students in 2017. Last year, that position was taken by, was um, occupied by Paris. Um, now we are on the, um, the top position for, for the best city for foreign students. Actually, we have uh, a lot of universities. We have two French universities and we have two English universities. So it's a city where people can be, can be bilingual because people switch from English to French within the same sentence. Oftentimes. And last, um, about the um, tech, um, high tech industry, Montreal is booming right now. Montreal is attracting a lot of big, giant tech. The um, Google, 
uh, Microsoft, Facebook, they, have all, they all have an office in Montreal. And right now, also, Montreal has become one of the international hub for artificial intelligence. About Quebec, now that I just gave you a glimpse of Quebec, let's talk about the Quebec immigrant uh, business immigration programs. Right now, we, use, we have only one open. We used to have three. We used to have the entrepreneur. We used to have the steel workers and investors. But the two last ones are closed. They will reopen under new conditions uh, pretty soon. So the, the only one that is left in terms of business immigration is the investor immigrant investor uh, in, immigrant investor programs, and each year they have a quota. So for this year that ends February 23rd, the quota is 1,900 applicants. The government won't accept more than uh, 1,900 uh, application. Um, as I mentioned, it ends on February 23rd, 2018, but it will reopen uh, uh, most probably a couple months later. There's an exception for the quota. People who speak French, they are not bound to those rules. People that can prove through a standardized test by the government that they have advanced or intermediate level of French, they are out of the quota, and they can submit the file until March 31st. Right. And moreover, their file will be processed in priority. So there's a lot of advantages for, uh, to, to know French if you want to migrate through this program. So what is this program? This program has been created in 1986 to offer investors the uh, possibility to have a permanent resident status by investing, now this is important, a risk-free, passive investment and guaranteed by the government because money goes to the government and doesn't go into uh, businesses. And so for those reasons, mainly because um, Quebec immigrant investor is one of the most popular. And right now it's really the only passive investment uh, program. Oops, sorry. Under this program, the main applicant and the family, so that the spouse or partner and all children under 22 year old will get the unconditional Canadian visa. And upon landing, they'll get the status of permanent resident status. And after three years, within a period of five years, they can apply for this Canadian citizenship. And of course, they can live, they can work, they can study anywhere in the country, and they can enter and leave without any problem. Now, who qualifies? I've mentioned to you all the benefits. Uh, now, who qualifies? There's three main criteria. The first one is the minimum net worth assets worldwide, legally acquired, of $1.6 million, Canadian dollars, which is equal to 1.1 euros, depending on the exchange rate. Second is that um, in terms of management experience, qualifying experience has to be at least two years out of the five years, in the five years prior to the application date. And management experience can come from uh, professional, uh, professional company, can come from commercial, agriculture, government, international organizations. Last but not least, the investment. It's an investment of $800,000 or 540 or 550, depending on the exchange rate, um, that you have to invest uh, f uh, to the government for a period of five years at a 0% interest. You can invest $800,000 or you can invest less if you opt for um, a financing. There's a financing option available, and that's what I'm going to tell you about. So there's two options in terms of investment. The first one is either you put 100% of your funds in order to invest the $800,000 to the government, or the second one is you choose the financing option. So ORE, through our partner, financial partner, the Desjardins Group, the largest financial institution in Quebec, and we have a representative of Desjardins here, 
um, they will finance will finance 70% of the required investment. So that means that either you put $800,000 out of your pocket, or you put 200 k and will give you the 600. Will finance the 600. 200 and 600 will make the 800 and will send it to the government. However, after five years, for the second option, when the government will give us back the 800, the 200 will be used to pay the, uh, the cost of uh, financing. Basically, it's the cost of immigration that uh, you're going to give uh, for the, in terms of $200,000. Is that clear? OK. So the advantage of the second option is that you are not blocking all your $800,000 uh, for five years. You just put 200, and you can invest this remaining $600,000 in other investment vehicles. And you just need to find an investment with a return rate of about 6%. And you'll get back your two hundred thousand dollars after five years. Um, now about the steps, the process. First of all, the investor has to sign an investment agreement with one of the financial intermediaries. Why is important? Because it's a financial financial intermediaries authorized by the government who will get the money and transfer it to the government. So OA, we are one of those. So we can um, we were allowed to get the, to receive the money, uh, the investment, and, and transfer it to the government. Second, the investments submit the file to us, and after that, we gonna analyze. We're gonna check if there's any documents missing, and we're gonna sign a declaration. The declaration meaning that notably that we have verified the ID of the applicants and also the source of funds. And that's very important. And then we send it to, uh, to the Quebec government. And then there's three possible answers. The first one is the file get declined, and that's not what we want. Because that's why we're making sure that we're maximizing the chance of success of the file. Um, so this is the first one. The second one is the file, the candidate get accepted. And that's what we want. The third one is the require interview to get more information. So let's say it goes through. What happened next is that the investor will receive a letter intent to provide a select certificate of se selection certificate of Quebec. This is the government document saying that the candidate has been accepted. After that. Um, the candidate has 110 days to make the investment. If they don't make it within the period of time, the file application will get declined. So that's very important to make it on time. And then afterwards, the CSQ will be issued. And then the, um, the investor can then submit to uh, the federal for the um, PR, permanent resident application. And if everything goes well, well, the, he will get the, um, the PR visa at the end, him and or her and the spouse or partner and the children. Now, um, I told you about uh, Quebec. I talked to you about the benefits of this program. I talked to you about the criteria and the process. OA is one of the um, financial intermediaries to ma who manage this program. And I'll tell you why um, uh, you should come to us, ORE, uh, and all the uh, services that we can offer to you. So as I mentioned to you, ORE here is authorized financial intermediaries for the Quebec government, uh, for the Quebec Immigrant Investor Program. Not only that, we one of the members of the Canadian Investor Protection Funds. So what does this mean? That means that in case of unlikely situation of insolvency, the, the money, the um, security within the investor account will be protected up to a maximum of $1 million. So that gives you peace of mind to deal with us or a capital. And so we're part of the Grand Thornton firm in Quebec, which is part of those two firms of Grand Thornton in Canada. And of course, Canada 
belongs to the international network of Grant Thornton. Um, at ORE, we have a team of a uh, very multicultural team, um, a little bit more than over 10 nationalities, 10 languages, and we have on board different type of profile of people. We have uh, business development, we have immigration specialists, we have former immigration officers. So that's very important because these one are used to do the interviews in their past life. These one used to do uh, the interviews, the analysis, and gave a decision, so they know what to look in the file. And it's very important, they are very important to us, and that's one of the reasons why we have them, is to maximize the chance of success for the file to, do, to go through. And in the past 25 years, we have done over, uh, we have helped over 20,000 investors in the project a pro immigration project. So in Canada, we located um, across the country, well, in three cities, Montreal, Toronto, and Vancouver. Now, my, my last slide, and not the least, I'm gonna tell you um, how our, um, our immigrants, our candidates can be well served with ORE. Because it's not only ORE capital, but we part of Grand Thornton. And we part also, we partner with Desjardins. So the candidate will, will be well served before, during the process, and long time after. So before, uh, we, we do pre-qualification uh, uh, versus the program choices. We assist the candidates if they're missing documents. We coach the candidates if they have to go to, into interview. And we facilitate business once they're in the host country. In this case, it's Canada, but it can be anywhere in the world. Uh, and then part of the immigration process, if they need tax planning, if they need source to verify their source of funds, well, Grant Thornton is there to help them to offer this service, not only in Canada, but in their country of origin. And then you have Desjardins, which is a the first financial institution in Quebec. They will offer the recently landed immigrants all the financial services and products needed for new uh, newcomer. They also can help the entrepreneurs, and they also can help in terms of wealth management for, for some uh, people, and also private banking if needed. So it's overall, I mean, we have three leaders on the one roof, and we can provide this uh, only by coming to us, uh, all three in, all in one. So that's, that's about my presentation. If you need, I know that I went through very quickly, um, and that each case is unique. So if you have any questions, you can either contact me and or come to visit our booth, booth number 40. I will be here until tomorrow. So now, without no further ado, I'm going to invite my colleague, Irina, to give you a preview of tomorrow's presentation. Thank you very much, Ao. Thank you for this great conference. Uh, I will talk about a little overview of the conference of tomorrow. Well, as you could understand, we are Grand Turton and we are present all over the world. In fact, Ao have, has presented you the party of Canada, and I will present tomorrow the party of Monaco, and now we will talk about uh, a little overview. Uh, just in order to inspire you, I propose you to watch a little video.
it is not a, it is not either an option but the obvious choice monaco why invest in monaco in fact it is a real opportunity why first of all quality of life monaco presents you exceptional quality of life you have sun you have sea you have mountains you have luxury environment and international environment it's really exceptional in europe for its political and economic stability because you know that uh, investors rank at the, at the top of their list the international stability, but also the national stability. Because, of course, if you invest, it's uh, either short term or long term, it's very important to invest in a political and, economical, and economically stable country. So you can be sure that in Monaco, the laws change very, very rare. Advantageous tax system is a real in Europe, is a unique in Europe. According to income tax, for example, you have no income tax in Monaco only for French citizens. Of course, the national laws and international treaties need to be analyzed in every single case, but the internal law of Monaco doesn't pay any income tax for the non-residents. Wealth tax, local taxes, taxes on capital gain, it will be a very short section because there is no one of these taxes in Monaco. So you can understand why the tax system of Monaco is very advantageous. Inheritance taxation. Of course, the transmission of intergenerational wealth is very important for families. So when we talk about inheritance tax, in the direct line for the Monaco property, the rate is about 0%. If we talk about the uh, persons without any family links, the rate is 16%. But if we are talking about the trusts, no taxation is applied on the inheritance. So we will talk also about how to move the principality and conditions to fulfill. The first one is housing. You need to be either tenant or owner or hosted by a close parent. You need to have sufficient financial resources in order to live in Monaco, so you need to have salary or resources from your comp company, uh, or you need to approve the certificate of Monaco Bank with uh, 500,000 euros on the, uh, on the Monaco account. And you need to have a good morality, so you need to present a criminal record or equivalent uh, in for the last five years and in the last two countries in order to become a resident in Monaco. In fact, you can become a resident in Monaco after three months of living there, but according to the, uh, financial, uh, according to the tax uh, issues, you become tax resident in Monaco after six months and one day of living in Monaco. So, when you decide to acquire property in Monaco, you have several options. Uh, first, uh, first one is the civil society or property management society. Uh, we will talk uh, tomorrow in details about these options, about this option, but in fact, you also can buy the French property by the Monaco Society, uh, which presents uh, advantageous options. And also, in order to run the society, run the property and sell the property, it's much more interesting uh, to set up a civil society uh, than to buy on, the, on your own name. Another option is the activity of a real estate broker. In fact, it was reopened in Monaco since 2015, because uh, before it was a little bit banned. So um, why it is interesting? In fact, when you buy uh, a property like a natural person, you pay 4.5% uh, of registration duties on the total price of the property. If you buy like a society, you have 7.5% of registration duties, but when you buy like a real estate broker, you have no registration duties. Uh, the one obligation you have is to sell the property four years after the acquisition. And you can, uh, you can set up a trust. It is a very old uh, practice in Monaco uh, since 1936, which is uh, ruled by the law 214. And uh, in fact, uh, you, the only um, something you should uh, fulfill is that you uh, have to come from the country which recognizes the trust. So now we are talking about all the countries of the common law. Of course, uh, you can set up other entities, and we will talk really in details tomorrow on the conference about them. Uh, first of all, single family office, because it helps you to centralize all your business, all your professional business of the family, and also your personal interests in one society. 
multi-family office because in fact in order to uh, set up a single family office you need to have more than 100,000 uh, uh, million euros of wealth so when you don't have this wealth but you have more than 10 million euros of wealth, you can uh, use the services of multifamily office which manage and trans your property and wealth for you. And commercial entity, because in fact Monaco presents uh, a lot of very interesting activities. It is a country which is very, uh, very advantageous for, for all, for example, setups or uh, when you talk about all ecological projects, Monaco is very, uh, is very online of this uh, on these projects, and uh, which is very interesting that the, the rate of taxation of the commercial entities we are talking about 33 percent, like in France, is in France, but in fact uh, the benefits are established established in a um, quite flexible way and we uh, also need to integrate the remuneration of the manager which is deductible from the benefits. So we talk about the real taxation between 5 and 10 percent of the benefits. And Grand Tour in Monaco can present you complete turnkey service. Uh, we care about everything. We care about all your projects from the beginning and during all the life of the project for your personal uh, issues or your professional issues for your societies and if you decide to move in Monaco we, we can help you in everything and we can put you in contact with investors, banks, real estate brokers, uh, all the third parties you need. So come tomorrow on our conference at uh, 2.50, uh, 2 I think it was changed the time, <laughs> 2.50 uh, tomorrow, and uh, visit our booth uh, number 40. Uh, we will answer all your questions. Thank you very much.